Welcome to a brief presentation on Public Sector Decarbonisation Scheme Phase 3A Change Requests. I will be the main speaker today. My name is Becca. I'm a Senior Energy and Carbon Analyst in the technical team at Salix and I'm involved in assessing change requests. So today we'll briefly be speaking about the change request process, the supporting information that is required when you submit a change request, the deadlines that apply to you and the support that is available at Salix. So a change request is necessary when there is an alteration to your project since the original submission or since the last change request. So that includes when measures are removed, measures are added or measures are increased or reduced in scope that are already existing in the project. So the major changes deadline actually has already passed. It passed on the 31st of October 2022. These types of changes, including adding a new site or changing sites or changing the low carbon heating system technology are no longer possible. This is due to concerns with the deliverability of single year projects by March 2023. So for multi year projects that are completing in March 2024 or March 2025, major changes are still being accepted. But for single year projects, these changes will no longer be assessed or accepted. So the changes that are being accepted are considered minor changes. So these include removing or adding measures to the project. These are energy efficiency measures. So if you decide to remove existing roof insulation from your project, for example, or decide to do an LED project in addition to your other measures in the project, then that's fine. The deadline for that is the 16th of January. So after this point, we'll no longer be assessing those types of changes because, again, of the deliverability of those projects by the March 2023 deadline. If existing measures in the project increase or reduce in scope, these are slightly different. So if the measures increase in scope, so for example, the area of windows that you're double closing increases, then that's a minor change and can be submitted by Monday the 16th of January. We'll just need to assess it again. The assessment shouldn't take too long, but it's so we're aware of those changes and any changes to gas savings, etc., cetera, um, can be authorised at this stage of the project. If, for example, you decide to reduce the scope of your glazing measure, that's actually a scope reduction and the deadline for that is just the grant end date of the 31st of March 2023. So it can kind of follow the, the, uh, the completions process in that you'll just have to provide an updated application form so we're aware of what measures went ahead and what didn't, but we won't need to authorise this change request. So it's just something that you'd share with us upon completion. And also removing sites is permitted until the grant end date. So it's only adding sites to the project that is not allowed at this stage, but removing sites is allowed until the grant end date. So I'm going to briefly run through the change request form. So this form should be shared with you by your relationship manager. It's also available on the phase 3A section of our website. The form essentially asks you to lay out why the change is necessary and um, what the change is and what supporting documents you've provided for us to assess that. So it's really important for you to tick the boxes that suggest is it a what sort of scope change it is at this stage, um, what measures have been moved or what measures have been re removed. Um, just detailing exactly what they are so that someone who hasn't looked at the project before and the technical team can easily understand what's going on and can follow those changes on your application form. It's also really important to provide energy saving calculations, any data sheets, an updated detailed project programme and risk register, and most importantly, an updated application form which details in the introduction, what exactly has changed about the project and all of the data in step 3.2 and step 4 should be updated as well as the cost breakdown in step 5 if that has changed. This section is really important because, as I said, it allows someone to really understand what's going on with the project um, and easily kind of 
look between your change request form, original application and updated application, understand exactly what's changed and just pass it that much more quickly. So the key checks that we'll do is look at the updated application form to make sure it's compliant. There are certain um, eligibility criteria that you still need to meet if you're doing a Skype change. Um, for example, if you're removing a site from the project, you can't do energy efficiency measures at that site anymore because one of the scheme criteria states that a measure has to go towards decarbonising the heating on that site for you to install any energy efficiency measures. So just being mindful of criteria like that when you're submitting change requests is really important and something that we'll check on the application form. Also making sure it's still compliant with the £325 per tonne of carbon criteria um, and anything above that would have to be funded by a client contribution. Energy saving calculations are really important to provide. For example, if you're increasing roof insulation measures, it's really important for us to understand the increasing gas that you'll be saving um, and for us to track that in the savings, verify them and make sure that those are accurate. An updated detailed project programme and risk register are really important for us to understand what stage the project is at and any additional risks that these measures might introduce to the project. It's also important that we have reassurance that you're still planning to complete the project by March 2023. Also, any specifications you have for the products that you're installing will be useful because you'll probably be aware that those are conditions of receiving funding anyway. So as long as you provide them kind of by the end, that's fine. But if you can provide them as you go, that's one less thing that you'll have to do at the completions process and allows us to understand what exactly you're installing and kind of give us confidence in the design of the project. So just to say briefly what we expect to see in energy saving calculations. So ideally these are in an unlocked Excel spreadsheet so that we can track kind of the methodology and the assumptions that you've used because most um, applicants choose to do this differently and that's fine. We just need to understand um, the methodology behind it. We expect to see logical industry standard methodology um, and any assumptions provided in the commentary. And we expect that the energy saving calculations come to the conclusion of the figures that are used in the application form so that there's an evidential basis for them. Specifications should be provided by the manufacturer and evidence the performance of the project product. For example, if you're providing updated heat pump calculations, for example, um, we'd expect the SCOP to be the same as what the data sheet suggests it should be. So key checks we'll do in the application form itself is check that the project's compliant, as I already said. Um, if it's non-compliant and above the £325 threshold, then, as I said before, the client contribution would have to meet that additional funding required. The grant value as well cannot increase from the goal value that was originally awarded. So the grant that was originally awarded cannot increase. And if you're getting more gas savings than you were originally, it might say on your application form that the eligible grant value has increased. However, the total grant requested cannot go above what was in your grant offer letter. Does each site include a low carbon heating measure? As I said before, each site has to include a measure to decarbonise the heating. Otherwise, we will have an issue funding the energy efficiency measures at that site. Um, hopefully you have been aware from that from the beginning, so this shouldn't be an issue. Also, we'll be checking if measures are sequenced correctly. So this slide basically demonstrates that any fabric upgrades that you do to the building should decrease the gas consumption to an amount that then the low carbon heating system can completely eradicate essentially. So there's basically a trickle down effect from the original consumption and then post in installation of your insulation measures or BMS. Um, and then the, the final figure, once those measures are installed, will be the amount of gas that can be displaced from the heat pump. It basically ensures that there's no double counting of gas savings. Um, and it's just it's just good for us to kind of see that visually. So just to reiterate the deadlines, major changes are no longer being accepted for single year projects. 
minor changes, including adding or reducing energy efficiency measures, are accepted until Monday, the 16th of January 2023. And scope reductions, including removing measures or removing sites, can be accepted until Friday, the 31st of March 2023, which is the grant end date for single year projects. The reason that we've implemented these deadlines is because of supply chain lead in times. These have been exceptionally longer this year, so we're just trying to ensure that any changes to the project can still be implemented before the grant end date. Planning and DNO applications can take longer than anticipated, so if there are any changes to the project, this can cause a delay as well. And obviously, again, to reiterate, we just want to, for you to be able to spend the grant by the grant end date. Also, a really important point is that changing scope of the project can impact the carbon compliance threshold. So essentially, if you're spending the same amount of money, but your gas savings reduce because you've removed certain measures, then the eligible grant value may decrease because of the CCT. So that's something to be mindful of when you're changing elements of the project. Um, and it's important to be mindful of that before the grant end date and before it comes to, you know, resolving conditions for your project so that you can ensure that you're getting the grant that you originally applied for and are eligible for. So the support that is available to you, obviously, the first point of call is your Salix relationship manager. They can provide support when it comes to completing application forms, the change request process in general, providing resources um, and directing you to, to certain things on our website. The energy and carbon technical team are also on hand to provide you with advice and support. We will be assessing your project and it's usually it's helpful for us to receive the change request um, and then we can get back to you with any queries rather than receive a query first about whether a change request is um, is going to be allowed. So if that if that works and that's that's really helpful. Um, and as I say, we'll just get in touch with you with any queries. Online resources are available um, to kind of talk you through. Any changes to the to the system and also webinar recordings and stuff will be available on that website. So brief mention on the delayed completions project and uh, process as we're coming to, to the end date. Um, no grant extensions can be provided, so you will not be able to spend the grant later than the 31st of March 2023. However, projects that can't complete within the grant timelines can complete with their own funding. Um, this is kind of looked at on a case by case basis. The Salix Relationship Manager will speak to you um, openly and transparently about this. The, AO must provide a letter confirming that the public sector body will provide any additional funds to complete the project to the arranged scope. And um, again, if the carbon compliance limit is breached, um, the client also will need to fund the difference if those energy savings change. But if you're um, thinking about this process, then I just encourage you to reach out to your Salix relationship manager as soon as possible. So to summarise, this process purpose is to support March completions. The deadlines are designed to enable the project delivery by the end of the financial year. And please ensure that you submit a change request form, the updated application form and any supporting documents, including energy saving calculations, updated project programme, risk register with your submission so that we can assess it as quickly as possible. Then there is the Salix Finance link included at the bottom. So please just visit our website if you have any more questions or thoughts. Thank you for listening. And yeah, if you have any questions, reach out to us, your Salix Relationship Manager or the website.